YouTube, it's Can Burn. Sorry about the uh, fan noise, but I just had the ignition on. I thought you all might want to check out the um, the production I'm getting. Uh, this is at 22 amps across the entire cell. Uh, the fluid temperature right now is 130 degrees. Sorry. pretty good. I haven't measured it in the liter bottle yet, but I just wanted to show you this. That uh, yes, it is gas, it's not steam, and it's not anything else. So yep, it is producing, producing pretty good. I guess the next thing I do is since I'm standing here with nothing else to do today, uh, because I've already rewired it in series and all that is doing well and everything is hunky dory, is uh, take my little bucket, take a one liter bottle, and uh, we'll try to run some production numbers. You know, they're not going to be 100%, but uh, we'll get it as close as we can. And uh, we'll get back to you. Hey, YouTube, just flushing the system out. Getting ready to make another mix. Uh, last one wasn't too good. Um, not really sure uh, where I went wrong, but my production is way off. Uh, that one I was running 22 amps. Uh, the mixture was at 130 degrees. But my production, um, I've got a half liter bottle. And uh, the half liter bottle took just over um, 35 seconds to 40 seconds to fill a half liter to uh, displace the water, doing the water displacement test. And I think it's actually like uh, 657 milliliters, but it still took 40 seconds to fill. Um, that's the one thing when you're watching these, yeah, it looks it looks impressive when the bubbles are coming up the bucket, you know, when you've got the hose in the bucket. But when you actually sit there and, and, and do a measurement, wasn't all that impressive. I thought because of the sodium hydroxide, I would have gotten a little more out of it. But then again, I don't think I'm in the seat. I'm, I don't think I'm in the sweet spot. I think there's a certain voltage a certain amperage and a certain temperature to which these things it, it, they have a sweet spot to where they really they really produce well and um, unfortunately when I got my highest mileage I didn't bother it was with the potassium hydroxide but I didn't I didn't really bother keeping track of the mix and what I did I was just so excited that I uh, got the mileage um, I kind of really screwed up on, on the details and uh, I didn't mark a lot of stuff down so maybe that's why my mileage was off. Maybe it wasn't the stop and go trap today. Maybe it's just because I was too stupid to document my findings and now I'm, now I've got to backtrack and try to figure it out. So I'll get this thing cleaned up and uh, get another mix and I'll be right with you. All right. We're gonna try. Uh, gonna try this again. Uh, I thought you'd like to see. Uh, it's the uh, Robic Crystal Drain Opener. Uh, let's see, used too much last time. I think that's why the amps got way up there. So we're gonna use this much. See that? We're gonna use that much for a gallon. I might even put a little bit more back. I'm gonna try just a pinch. And we'll get that stirred up and uh, pour it in. All right, we're gonna close the uh, drain valves on the bottom. Thank God when they built this unit, they put decent valves on the bottom. If I, 
if I can thank anybody and everybody who was into the design of uh, the Hydro Super 2, it was the ease of the valves on the bottom to make servicing this ain't easy because I can't, I, I've seen some of the designs of the other ones out there and just being able to do what I can do with this unit to disassemble the whole thing. Serviceability, folks. If you're going to buy a hydrogen generator, try not to go with the cookie cutter, you know, no servicing, can't take away my secret project hydrogen generator. Get one that you can disassemble, that you can clean, that doesn't have all the secret squirrel crap. Everything should be out there in the open for you to look at. Don't buy into the hype that, hey, you just need to open this plug and just give it a simple flush. Get yourself a unit to where you can take the top off, the bottom off. Pull the cell out if you want to. If you want to service a cell, if you want to change plates, if you want to clean the plates, maybe you'd like to modify the plates. I mean, look at it this way. They're getting their money from you for just buying a commercial unit. If you're not in the, if you're not where I'm at yet, you know, I'm just now starting the initial steps of building my own. But if you're going to buy a commercial unit, get one that you can play around with, that you can learn from, that you can take apart and hold the parts in your hand and, and see what you've got. Um, like I said, I'm not knocking them, but I don't believe in that non-serviceability issue that a lot of people put on their products. Um, I believe that the uh, that the shade tree mechanic should be able to tear the thing apart and for it to go back just as easily as he took it apart and to give him an understanding of the workings of the unit so he can improve on it. I mean if I can improve on this unit don't think for a second that I'm not going to call up the owners or the designer and say hey man you, you may want to try this this just might work out for you and it just might make it less complicated and cumbersome for uh, the everyday person out there so enough of that all right mix this back in i just use a smidgen of sodium hydroxide we're going to crank it up uh bring it up to temperature and uh let's do another production test i'm going to be doing this all day so bear with me teaspoon of sodium hydroxide. I got the uh, unit up to um, 12 amps total. So it was six in each cell. Uh, it produces, but it's definitely not the sweet spot. Temperature got up to 110 degrees and it uh, just wasn't uh, producing gas like I needed to produce gas. It wasn't like that the first time. So I know if I use a, a whole teaspoon of sodium hydroxide, I know I'd bump it up to 30 amps in a heartbeat. So I'm going to go back to um, potassium hydroxide for this next setup. Start with just a little less than a quarter teaspoon. Hell, I might even just count flakes, put in like 10 flakes into a gallon jug. Start slow, work the amps up slowly. I want to see what it's going to do with just, uh, you know, between five and seven amps per tube. I don't want to be overbearing with it, but I want to see if there's got to be a sweet spot that, that this unit likes to where it really rolls like it did the first time. The first time you couldn't, I uh, wish I'd measured it, but um, I didn't measure and I didn't write it down. So, you know, it's kind of like a cook, you know, it's kind of like a, a baker who discover something for the first time. It was a little pinch here, it was a little pinch there, it was a flake or a pinch. And, uh, it's just a matter of getting back there to it. So, hey, I got all day, man. I got, I worked my shift yesterday. I got two days off in a row, then I go back on shift. So, it's not like I don't have time. I'm just, I'm producing my own water and I probably got enough potassium hydroxide and Lowe's ain't going to run out of that anytime soon. So, I'll get it and then I'll get back to you.